Get ready for the smackdown. Get ready for the smackdown. How you gonna react when you're put in the back now? Cause there's no turning back when you're facing the smackdown. Welcome back, guys, to my fantasy fights section seven is continuing and rolling on right guys so i bring you another fight in a way you can kind of say technology versus technology uh video game character versus comic character video game icon versus comic book icon nintendo versus marvel in a way uh so let's kick it off miss samus arrain versus Tony Stark, Iron Man. Yeah, I thought about this fight, and I was like, yeah, this this is be interesting. Like I said, technology versus technology. And uh, we're going to kick it off with uh, Miss Samus. Miss Samus, of course, is probably one of the most iconic video game heroines ever. The very first. So she gets the respect that she deserves. She is by far my favorite of the... Nintendo characters being female. I like her over Zelda, believe it or not. Um, she is from the Metroid series. And Samus is a intergalactical bounty hunter. Uh, she is... Uh, she gets her, uh, her, her bounties from the uh, Galactic Federation. She was a soldier as well. She was an orphan. She was orphaned as a child. And she was brought up and raised by the extraterrestrial uh, um, beings known as the uh, Chozar race. And they've also integrated their blood into her, making her like the perfect soldier. Um, so she's half human or half uh, Chozo, as they call it. And they also gave her her power suit. And her suit can do a lot of things as well it has a very array of weapons of course beams you know uh, uh, cannons uh, energy waves and of course she can transform into that ball that we all seen her do uh, but to think that she's nothing without that suit then you're wrong because she's she's still she's really good even without that like I said she's a former soldier as well and she was brought up tough and hard and rough but she knows her strengths she knows her weaknesses and she knows she doesn't rely on her power suit but that is an iconic piece of equipment um very uh iconic piece of equipment that she she owns and that everybody knows her for uh it's it's just amazing to see, I'm just glad to see that she's still around for all these years and her popularity is still as high as it was when she first started and she's she's a tough opponent for anybody she's smart she's 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 uh brave she's just all around what you would want in a a female soldier in a way so to speak Samus are right, people. Okay, so we move on to the next, uh, his, her combatant in this. And everybody should know this guy, Mr. Tony Stark, the armored Avenger himself, Iron Man. Known also as a futurist. You know, he always is thinking. Though, so to speak, uh, in the future, you know, he's always, his mind is always thinking ahead what his technology can bring to the future for mankind in a way. Um, as you know, he was gravely injured and it was because of that he made the, the his first uh, Iron Man suit, his first suit, you know, the big clunky silver gray armor to escape from his captives and so on and so forth. He went on to just create more different types of armor, always upgrading them every time, just upgrading, upgrading them. The technology getting better, 
You know, he became a founding member of the Avengers, went on to have his own solo career, billionaire, billionaire playboy, philanthropist, you name it. Uh, his his weapon of choice in his armor's repulsor rays, his powerful unibeam. He now has in his more powerful armor, the bleeding edge armor, uh, the repulsor sword. You know, he's got smart bombs. He's he is a walking, you know, arsenal. Uh, but he tries not to use that as his purpose. He tries to be a hero, you know, and he has his problems. Everybody knows that Iron Man, Tony's had his problems, which makes him relate to a lot of people. But he he always tries to make up for his problems. And I, I you have to respect Tony for that. Um, as a combatant, he's got most of his training from Cap. You know, Steve has trained him told him to realize that don't rely on your armor as much, you know. And for a time, we started to see that Tony stopped doing that. He started to rely on his armor. And, you know, he's, he's always got to thank, you know, Steve for that. But, uh, you know, all in all, he's, his, his armors have always been upgraded and he's always been at the forefront of being what he's known as, you know, that futurist, you know, thinking like, maybe months, years ahead of the present, you know, and that's something that you always got to respect about Tony, you know, but of course you got to love his repulsor rays and, you know, his unibeams and things like that and just the sheer brilliance of this man. So, in terms of a battle between these two individuals, these two armor-powered individuals, this would be a very interesting battle. I think Tony would love to scan Samus's armor. You know, in a fight, I can see him really, you know, scanning, like, computer scan her armor, like, trying to find weaknesses or just trying to see, you know, what makes her armor tick. And I can see that the same thing for Samus as well, you know. It makes you wonder, like, could Tony's repulsor rays do damage to Samus's armor? Could Samus's rays do damage to... You know, Tony's arm. It's who's got the better technology, who's got the better uh, training as well, who's, who's, or it could come down to brains instead of brawn, you know, who's going to outsmart one another, you know. But I don't see these two killing each other. I really don't. I don't see them killing. I would see, no matter what, them having a lot of respect for each other, especially Tony. I think Tony would love to know where Samus got her armor from and things like that. But uh, I leave it up to you guys. Samus? Or Iron Man? And other than that, guys, this is the first fight for today. One more to go. Mom Vernon Kid saying peace. Stay tuned. Battle on.